Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And welcome to First St. Paul's Lutheran Church. In the strong name of Jesus, the guardian and shepherd of our souls. A special welcome to you visiting us, returning to our webpage, our online worship services, and visiting us, especially for the first time. We would love to hear from you. We would love to get to know you better, even though we can't see each other face to face. To everyone, please email me at tjohnson at fspauls.org if you have any prayer needs, any ways that we can serve you, or any questions, or any trouble accessing our online services. And please visit our website, fspauls.org, which we do our best to keep current. We are joyfully committed to doing God's work in these days of difficulty, isolation, and separation. We are still checking our mail and receiving offerings online through our online giving button on our website. Marlo has a few announcements. Good morning. My name is Marlo Scholes, and I'm the Director of Family Ministry and Outreach here at First St. Paul's Lutheran Church. I wanted to highlight a few things for you from today's bulletin. Today, we will have a voters meeting using Zoom conferencing. The information for this meeting should have been emailed to you last week. Also, because of the voters meeting, we will not have our regularly scheduled Sunday school or Bible study today. Today, we do celebrate a faith milestone. A faith milestone is an opportunity for us to gather as a family of faith and celebrate a special event that occurs in the life of a believer of Jesus. Today, we celebrate the milestone of prayer with our children, and our children will lead us in the Lord's Prayer in a video during our worship service today. We hope you enjoy seeing our children as they gather around the altar to pray. And we welcome you to be at home among us. God's encouragement, enrichment, and blessings as you enter worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. God of all power, you called from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed one another with knowledge and understanding. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. A reading from Acts. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. from 1 Peter. It is a credit to you if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, 
he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come in before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. This Good Shepherd Sunday, we remember that King David was the author of Psalm 23. This poem is packed with imagery from his personal experience as a shepherd of sheep. You'll remember that when Samuel, the prophet, came to David's father Jesse's home to find the next king of Israel, David was outside in the fields tending the flock. Later, when Goliath of Gath boasted about his height, strength, and all the Israelites he was about to kill, David drew his confidence from his skills as a shepherd. 
He tells the people of God that whenever a lion or bear came to him while he was tending his flock and took a lamb from his flock, he said, I went after it and I struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David then slays Goliath with one small polished stone. David's confidence is not merely in his own skills, however, as a sling and stone marksman. He draws a connection between his vocation as a shepherd of sheep to his higher vocation as a sheep under the care of the Lord the good shepherd. His trust is in the Lord. And so he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David sees the connection between his passion and skill to protect the sheep and God's even greater passion and even greater strength and ability to take care of us, his people. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. David led his sheep from green pasture to quiet waters. He satisfied their hunger and thirst to make them lie down contentedly. But it was not all bucolic serenity. It was not all a bed of spring greens and flowing streams of water. Between the pasture and flowing streams, there were dark valleys. There were thorns, cliffs, predators lurking in the shadows, lions, bears, wolves, and thieves who would kill and poach. David speaks of the shadow of death. These are the dark corners of our journey where the threat hides under the cover of darkness. Think of the reflected light from the retinas of the predators in the darkness. Those pair of twinkling Hungry eyes staring down at us, wanting to have our sheep and us for breakfast. Or the sound of the hireling or the thief sharpening his knife in the shadows, ready to kill and steal. I've never led a flock of sheep through the wilderness, but I do have several experiences hiking territory ruled by bears and lions. Once I was hiking with a friend and we saw a huge track of mountain lion prints join the dusty path that we were on. It was a windy day, so those prints were fresh. It was unnerving. Our only defense that we had were our clawless fists and kicks and our toothless cries for help compared to the fangs of that mountain lion. We constantly heard rustling in the brush and trees. Not just once, but twice, we saw deer jump out of the shadows, presumably because they were being chased by that mountain lion. We finished the hike and were walking down and away from the mountain. My friend calmly said, Tom, 
turn around. I did. And there, far away, high up on the cliff, above us was a large mountain lion walking back and forth, pacing, looking at us as if to say, I wouldn't come back if I were you. I wouldn't trespass my hunting ground ever again. As collective humanity, we have always struggled with many invisible foes. Whether it be a virus or the powers and principalities of this dark world. Our own sin, palpable evil. We cannot always see what is in the shadows of this world or in the hardened hearts or in the calloused minds of others or even ourselves. As the prophet Jeremiah says, the heart is desperately wicked. Who can understand it? We cannot lean on our own understanding. We cannot rely on our own strength. Our only hope and our only confidence is in the good shepherd, the Lord. Yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David sees himself as a vulnerable sheep, a helpless creature whose only option, whose only option is to shelter himself under the care and skillful rod, sling and stone of the good shepherd, the Lord. The one whose guiding staff is the word of God. David himself puts himself into the place of the sheep and God as the shepherd who cares for him. Jesus turns this image upside down. Beautifully, he says that he is the good shepherd, the Lord. I am the gate of the sheep. Ego emi, I am that I am. I am Yahweh, the true and living God. He is the one through whom we find shelter and rest during troubling, dangerous, and exhausting times. He knows full well what hides in the shadows. It is not darkness to him at all, but is light. He alone knows how to overcome adversity and evil, even though it run and hides when he comes. And he has already wielded his rod and his staff for you and me. Our safety and our security is found under the care of Jesus, the good shepherd. He laid down his life for the sheep. He was scourged by the rod and crucified by the wooden beams of the cross of Calvary. It appeared that injustice and evil prevailed. But early that Sunday morning, at the light of day, he rises from the dead. He proves that he has victory over the Goliath of our sins. He has stopped the roaring and prowling of the lions of Satan, and he has dealt a death blow to death itself. Though for a little while that threat lurks in the shadows, out of view, we walk by faith, not by sight. Trust in the Lord, not in ourselves. One day, 
the shepherd and guardian of our souls, will bring about final defeat and an end to the threat of all of our enemies. His grace assures us, I have overcome. I have come into the world that you may have life and may have it abundantly. His presence assures us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the meantime, we say, I will not let fear, but the Lord get the best of me. Even though for a short while we walk beneath the shadows, we will refuse to let fear and the threat of it paralyze us. Not the terror in the night, but the trust that we have in the Lord will guide us and will rule our hearts and our minds. Fear will not rob us of God's peace and joy. For the Good Shepherd is risen indeed. We are the sheep. Christ is the shepherd. He says, you got this because I got this. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, overseer of our souls, we thank you for bringing us together under the shelter of your wings as we are the sheep of your flock. We especially give you thanks for friends and family of First St. Paul's, Loray, Richard, Jill, Lydia, and Henry, T and Clyde, Howard and Nancy, and Charles. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to help us to find ways to come together through prayer, word, and fellowship with these days when gathering together physically is not possible. We trust that you will encourage us and uphold us as we strive to connect to one another as well as reach out to our neighbors in need. Give us this encouragement and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherding God, we thank you for the educational ministries of your church. We pray, Lord, that you would enrich the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculty at colleges, seminaries, and all learning institutions, both those of our Lutheran church as well as those outside and public schools as well, that you would be with all the students, especially those who may be graduating this year, help them in the times of things that are difficult to understand. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who operate farm equipment, those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmers markets, for grocery workers, for those involved in agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands and protect the food that they produce so that they may feed the world and answer our prayer for daily bread. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire all of our leaders, both here and abroad, to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live that life that you give abundantly, sustainably, faith in you, and giving you all the glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly on your shoulders. 
We pray for those who walk through dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. We especially lift up to you those who've requested our prayers for healing, Susan, Carolyn, Richard, Al, Elwood, Marcia and Gail, and Caroline. Be the sustainer and healer of their bodies and souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wise God, we also lift up to you those who are in isolation. We lift up to you those who are sick with illness of any kind, especially that of the COVID-19 coronavirus. We pray, Lord, that you would give medical professionals and researchers wisdom and safety as they serve us in the front lines of this pandemic. Grant them creativity and wisdom and speed as they look for a cure. And give us courage and patience to face these days, not with fear, but with patience and compassion and concern and acts of selfless service trusting that you are with us always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless all advocacy work, food pantries, and feeding ministries, especially our community meals ministry. May none of our neighbors lack for basic needs for food, clothing, shelter, and employment. Satisfy the desire of all of our souls. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, your beloved have heard your voice. You have called them by name and guided them to your side through death. We thank you for their lives of faithful witness in the lives they now live by your side as the sheep of your fold. Help us look to our future with that same hope and comfort of that great reunion to come when the shepherd of our souls comes to gather us home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in Lord heaven, in heaven hallowed, be thy name. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thank you.